All right, let's talk more about that briefing by the Tourism Minister. I'm joined by the Tourism Business Council of South Africa's CEO, Chifira Chibengwa. Chifira, very good afternoon to you. Thank you for being on ENCA as always. Let's begin with that one announcement that a lot of people will no doubt be welcoming this afternoon, the decision to allow people to travel within their respective provinces. How big of a boost will that provide for the industry? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it is definitely a big boost, uh, you know, for the industry. It provides hope. Uh, in terms of, you know, the direction that we're going uh, uh, from the tourism and leisure, you know, perspective. Uh, it, 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 it does give that, you know, hope to say, you know, when you're in a bigger province where you can travel within your own province, where you can go and stay in an accommodation of your own choice, you can do so. And therefore, the employees that work in those establishments, you know, can start to have that hope of going back to work. And those that want to travel, you know, and get out of, you know, uh, busy areas, they should be able, you know, to do so. So it, it's a step in the right direction. It goes a long way. It gives us a boost. It gives us a hope. Uh, and we, we, we do certainly hope that, you know, more things will come in the coming weeks when it comes to the interprovincial travel. But for now, the fact that we can travel within your own province, stay in an accommodation within your own province, uh, it's a step in the right direction. And we certainly welcome that. But when you look at just the numbers of people that are likely to travel, we see it even globally where the numbers are significantly lower compared to the uh, pre-COVID-19 period. So there will still be that big problem for the establishments that welcome people as far as turning over an actual profit. Absolutely. You know, we don't expect to, uh, to make any profit this year or next year. We want to at least have the wheels of the value chain moving. Uh, and to ensure that, you know, the employees uh, that are so dependent on the tourism sector can go back to work. So we don't expect any profit in the near future. What we, that's what we've been saying over the past few months, that, you know, allow us to operate. We do know that the demand may not be as great as we want it to be, but leave the issues around demand to us. We will deal with it as we are business people, and we should be able to see whomever wants to come to this establishment can do so in a safe way. So, you know, I do agree that, you know, the, the numbers internationally, even IATA, uh, the International Air Transport Association have said that, you know, Africa is going to suffer from uh, the arrivals from international markets. We do know that here at home, uh, a lot of people have lost their jobs or they're uncertain about their jobs and their future. So therefore, many people may not uh, be traveling. However, there is a group of people that are willing to travel, that have been working, that have the means to do so. We need to allow them to travel. And this is the first step that allows them to at least get out of their homes within their province, enjoy what tourism has to offer and hospitality. And also in the near future, I'm hoping that they will be able to drive a little bit further than their homes, especially those that are within Kauteng. At least be able to drive to Bella Bella, to uh, Northwest, to Mpumalanga, Free State, to enjoy what this country has to offer. It's a step in the right direction, but more still needs to be done. But it's a difficult situation, isn't it, Chifira? Because you've got a tourism industry where People in Gauteng can travel in Gauteng, if you're in the Eastern Cape, you can travel around the Eastern Cape. Those will be much lower numbers, right? You've also now got these establishments that must put in place the necessary COVID-19 safety protocols. They have people who they have to pay. And you wonder how a lot of them are going to have to juggle all of those moving parts. No, absolutely. You're quite right. Uh, if you look at the statistics, around 60 to 70 percent of domestic leisure travelers are coming from Gauteng, and they travel outside of Gauteng. So that's why the interprovincial travel is an important part of domestic travel. And we do understand from what the minister have said that uh, it is a matter that will be considered at some point. Uh, but for now, we can get this, uh, you know, intra-provincial meaning traveling within your own province. So yes, you're right. Moving across the provincial borders, especially for Gauteng residents, it's important because they make up the majority of domestic leisure travelers. Other people that are in other you know, provinces like your Western Cape, those that are in the Cape Town area, they can be able to travel up, up to George or Clattenburg Bay and many other areas. Those that are in Kazakhstan, they can go to the Drakens Bay. It does make a difference to some level, uh, but of course, you know, allowing people to move across the provincial border borders is what, you know, we would love to see, and it will stimulate uh, in a far greater uh, rate than, uh, than where we are now. But for now, this is, you know, a good direction. We welcome this, and we believe that, you know, we should be able to sit around the table and figure out how to do, you know, the next phase in a safe way. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Protocols are there. 
people have to enforce them, it becomes difficult if you don't have customers. So you need customers to be able to put this, these uh, PPEs in place uh, and ensure that you, know, you do recover some money and be able to pay your staff. I'd like to get your reaction to the changes as far as the curfew. We know that everything was meant to close in the country, no movement from 9 o'clock until 4 in the morning. Now the minister is saying, well, we can shift that to 10 p.m. every evening. Does that make a difference where the tourism sector is concerned? It does make a difference, especially in the restaurant sector. Uh, it means that, uh, you know, you've got an extra hour uh, to serve your customers. An hour makes a difference in a restaurant. So it means that those, you know, patrons that wants to have dinner, if you leave your work uh, and you get to a restaurant at 7, you have enough time to have your dinner uh, with you, your family, your significant others. Uh, it makes a difference. We don't want people to be leaving restaurants running into their car and rushing to get home because they're going to break the curfew. We want everyone to comply. We want everyone uh, to be able to do things at ease because you know, at the end of the day, when you go to a restaurant, you want to relax. You want to be in a state where you can enjoy you know, the meal. Uh, we don't want you to be rushing home. So that makes a difference, uh, the fact that we have an extra hour to work with. And, uh, of course, the industry will welcome that. Uh, it, it is a step in the right direction. And hopefully, as time goes, as the disease, uh, you know, gets to be managed better, you know, we may have a cafe of, of uh, 11 o'clock so that the restaurants can, can go back to the normal trading hours. But, but the, we welcome that as a step in the right direction. Uh -huh. The biggest wish that restaurants have not been granted yet is around the sale of alcohol. And the industry has repeatedly said that that's where majority of profits come from for most of them. So, uh, what indication are you getting us? as far as to how quickly you can get to that level, because it is a big sticking point if these establishments are going to make money. Look, uh, you know, the issue around, you know, the sale of alcohol, you know, has been ventilated in many platforms by many groups. Uh, I'm, I'm in some of these groups, and I talk to many people that are involved in the industry, because even ourselves in the hospitality sector, you know, the sale of alcohol is important. Uh, and it has a higher margin uh, as, uh, as part of our, our sales. So uh, it is something that has to be looked at. Uh, we, believe, we do understand that it's a difficult uh, subject matter at the moment. But, you know, with difficult subject matters, at some point we need to discuss these issues. We need to ensure that, you know, uh, we can present, you know, to the government and say, well, we can do this in a safe way. And there's been many proposals that have come, that have came, you know, to government from, you know, the liquor industry and many traders and many people in the shabins and restaurants and those that are manufacturing to say that, you know, we can do this in a safe way. Of course, we do know, we do acknowledge that there, there are problems with, uh, you know, those that don't know how to use alcohol in a safe way. Uh, we, we still need to sit down around the table and discuss those things. Uh, but we believe that, you know, that issue has to be discussed uh, as soon as possible. We need to look at ways of doing it. Uh, we need to look at uh, how many days we can open it, especially in a restaurant space where, you know, you can consume it with meals. Uh, we need to be able to talk about that and find a way forward from between ourselves and government. So it is, it is it's a hot potato at the moment, but we need to discuss it. Uh, we need to find a way forward as soon as possible because the value chain is struggling. The more the value chain struggle, you know, people within the value chain are going to start closing down, more jobs are going to be lost, and that's not the situation that we want to see in this country. Chief Rashwengo, thank you so much for speaking to us.